Hello students, Ms. Swanson here, and today we're taking a look at ray diagrams of plane mirrors. Remember that plane mirrors are the flat mirrors? These are the ones that we're most used to, for example, the ones that you would look at in the morning when you're doing your makeup or doing your hair. Those ones are the plane mirrors. So this picture here just shows reflection off of a plane mirror. Now, this doesn't show a ray diagram the way that we will be drawing them, but it just shows reflection and the proper uh, laws of reflection being followed. So we have two learning goals today. The first to draw ray diagrams of images produced in plane mirrors, and the second to describe images produced by plane mirrors. So before we can get to our ray diagrams, we'll start off by learning how to describe these images, and then we'll learn how to draw them. So the first thing uh, is we use an acronym called SALT, S-A-L-T, and that helps us to remember the four characteristics that we'll be using to describe the images. So S stands for size, and you're comparing the size of the image compared to the original object. So is the image the same size, is it smaller, or is it larger? Attitude has to do with the orientation of the image. So if the original, let's say it's a tree like this one, if the tree is facing right side up and the image is also right side up, then we would say those are upright. If the tree is facing the opposite way, we would call that inverted. Now be careful here. If the original is facing down, so it's different than how we're used to looking at a tree, but that's the original is the tree facing upside down, then inverted would actually be a tree that's right side up because they are different from each other. And then a tree that's upside down would be called um, upright because it's facing the same way as the original. So we're always comparing it to the original. We're not comparing it to what we're used to seeing in the real world. So upright means they're facing the same direction and inverted means they're facing different directions. L stands for location, and this is the location of the image. For a plane mirror, it would be distance, or you could say it's on the same side of the mirror, the opposite side of the mirror. We'll find that for a plane mirror, it's always going to be the same answer, uh, but we would just describe the location of the image. And then T stands for type, and this is if it's a real image or a virtual image. Now, this is sometimes a tricky concept for students. A real image means that light actually arrives at that location, and a virtual image means that light does not arrive at that location. So most of the images that we're used to seeing when we, you know, when we look in our plain mirrors when we're doing our hair in the morning or whatever we're doing, that image is a virtual image because it looks like there's someone, when we look in the mirror, it looks like there's someone on the other side looking back at us. It's not that we see someone floating beside us here, we see them facing towards us. We know that light doesn't actually go through the mirror and have someone on the other side. That's that doesn't work that way. The mirror is not transparent. So light does not move through the mirror, which means light is not arriving at the location where we see the image. So it's virtual. On the other hand, if the light bounces off the mirror and then the image is located somewhere on the same side as the original object, that would be a real image. So let's take a look at the picture here. This shows us what a real image would look like. You can't see it in the picture, but on the far left side there's a mirror. And so the, the, this doesn't actually um, happen with plain mirrors, but it'll happen with the curved mirrors that we'll look at later. The light from the light bulb, which has a little smiley face on it, goes and bounces off the mirror and then comes back and it's if you put a piece of paper there, we call that a screen, the image of the light bulb appears on the screen. So it's on the same side as the original object. If you looked in the mirror, you wouldn't see the light bulb. You can only see the light bulb on a screen that's held on the same side as the object. So we would call that a real image. So let's take a look at how we would draw these. I'm going to show you first of all how these diagrams um, follow the, the rules of reflection and then we'll look at the easy fast steps, the way to actually draw them without having to go through all of these long steps drawing the rays. So you can see down at the bottom there's an eye, so someone's looking at this orange original object and if we have a light ray that goes in towards the mirror and then reflects off the mirror at the same angle and hits the eye. 
We then have another light ray that bend, that goes in towards the mirror and reflects off the mirror again, the same angle of incidence and re reflection uh, are equal to each other. So we can see that both of those end up hitting the eye. Now, in our brain, we can't perceive that light bends. So according to us, light always moves in a straight line. So if we look at that blue line, our mind does not know that it's reflecting off a mirror. Our mind thinks that it came from straight back there on the other side of the mirror. We know it doesn't because light cannot travel through a mirror. It's, tra it's not transparent, it's opaque, but our brain interprets it as having come through the mirror. Same thing with that red line, our brain interprets it as having come through the mirror. So the way that our brain interprets this image is that it's on the other side of the mirror and that's how we would see a virtual image. And so the green one is the image, and it looks very similar to the original object. In fact, it's the same size, same orientation as the original object. So let's see now how we would, and sorry, and same location from the mirror. You can see those little white brackets show the same distance from the mirror. So they have the same size, it's upright, opposite locate side of mirror, and it's a virtual image. So let's look at how we would draw these uh, doing some faster uh, methods rather than drawing all of those rays. So what first thing that we're going to do when we have our object is we're going to draw guidelines that are perpendicular to the mirror. Um, if you notice the mirrors that I'm drawing here don't have the little hatch marks to show that there's one side that's reflective and one that's not. I'm just trying to keep it simple, but the side where the object is represents the reflective side. So you're going to draw guidelines perpendicular to the mirror. So these are normals. Uh, in real life, there aren't lines coming out of the mirror straight towards us. These are imaginary, but they help us draw our image. So we're going to draw from the top of the image a guideline. And you should be using a ruler when you guys do this. So we're going to draw a guideline from the top and we'll draw a guideline from the bottom as well. Now if there are other points along the way of the image, if for example this little balloon bends in the middle and there's another kink in there, you would also draw a guideline from that area. So now that we've drawn those lines, we're going to measure the distance from this original object to the mirror. So this distance we'll measure and then we're going to have that equal to the same distance on this side. So we'll measure with a ruler and then we might put a little marking there so we know how far it is and we'll make sure those are equal distances. And then from that distance we'll draw our image. And this is a vertical line so we'll draw a vertical line here. Again you can measure this distance and measure it to be the same over here. So that's how we would draw our image and we know that it's going to be uh, the same size, it's going to be upright, opposite side of the mirror, and it's going to be virtual. So let's take a look at another example. This time our object is on the side, but we're going to follow the same rules. We're going to draw some guidelines that are perpendicular to the mirror, and we're going to do it at all the locations that are different from each other. We're then going to measure the distance of the object to the mirror and use that same distance on the other side. And we'll put a little marking here. And then we'll do the same thing for the bottom because the bottom is a different distance from the mirror. And we'll put a little marking there. And now we can draw our image. And again, you guys should be using rulers when you do this. So when we have our final image, same size, upright, opposite side of mirror, and virtual. If you notice a pattern here, hopefully you have noticed, those will always be your answers for a plain mirror when you're describing it. And then finally, we're going to look at one that's a little bit more difficult. Here the mirror is on the side. Now, our guidelines are still going to be perpendicular. A lot of students will just draw them straight across the page because that's what they're used to. It's not parallel to the edge of your page, it's perpendicular to the mirror. So you'll hold your ruler at an angle and draw those perpendicular lines. So in this case it would look something like this. And something like this. 
And then again from there we would measure the, uh, the distance from the object to the mirror and do the same thing on the other side. So we put a little marking there. Same thing at the bottom, we would measure that distance, put a little marking there, and then we could draw our final image. And those ones should be the same. So we should end up with the same size, upright, opposite side of mirror, and virtual, just like we saw with all of our other diagrams. So let's take another look at our learning goals. You should be able to draw array diagrams of images in plane mirrors, and you should be able to describe images produced by plane mirrors. If you can do that, fantastic. If not, please re-watch the video. And if you're still having trouble, come ask me in class tomorrow. All right, that's all for now. Bye-bye.